Okay guys, I'm going to get started on the build of the Martian and here are the parts I've collected to put into this build. So I'm going to start here with the ESCs. Here I'm doing the uh, Racer Star 20 amp. Uh, these are the Beale Heli S ESCs and they're pretty small. They're based on the uh, Sunrise Cicada um, BB1 processor. And I got some Racer Star motors here. These are the uh, 2205-2300 kV. I'm going to be using a XSR uh, free sky receiver and a Runcam Swift uh, FPV camera and the Eosheen TX250 Mini uh, VTX and uh, that's the Lux flight controller, the, the clone of the Luminar Lux. It's the one from Banggood. I just reviewed that recently. So as usual I'll have links to all these parts in the description below and in this build video I'll probably film most of the important stuff that you want to see um, instead of a sort of a build overview after the fact so hopefully this will uh, help you guys build this out as uh, cleanly as possible okay guys so for this first part I'm taking the top of the frame off I just unscrewed the eight screws from the uh, bottom plate and um, I did another video on how to build this frame so I'm not going to cover that in this one I'll put a link here in the corner right here and you can click on that and uh, it'll take you to the, the building of this frame which was actually pretty easy so um, anyway for this first part what I'm going to do is uh, something I don't usually do but um, is I'm just going to take the ESCs and the motors and uh, just going to solder these wires together and uh, normally I would uh, to unsolder these wires from the ESCs and solder the motor wires directly to the ESCs uh, but I have um, a bunch more 2205 motors coming so I wanted to use uh, this frame as well for testing so I know that I'm going to be um, unsoldering these motors taking them off pretty soon so i um, going to make this easier for me to just solder these wires and then I can just unsolder them later and it also will um, save uh, stress on the ESC from these um, pads being worn down from soldering and unsoldering. So, so I'm going to solder these motor wires together to the ESCs and then I'm going to mount the ESC to the arm and then solder on the uh, uh, power wires to the uh, PDB for this first part. Okay guys, so I finished the first part where I inst I've installed the ESCs and the motors. I changed my mind here and uh, wrapping the wires around here. Uh, there was just too many wires, it was too long and too bulky. So I just went back to the way I always do things. I left a little bit of extra slack here in the motor wire in case I want to use this in another build. Uh, but I just directly soldered it to the ESC and removed the original ESC wires here. And I've just got the ESC stuck on the arm with some double sided foam tape and the uh, uh, ESCs are soldered onto the PDB here. Got our uh, signal wires coming out. And I'll probably just do a little zip tie here just to secure these wires. So in case the uh, foam tape uh, decides to give. But uh, that's pretty much it on all four. And the next uh, step will be to install the flight controller. That'll be next. Okay guys, a couple of things um, I should note here on the Lux flight controller as I was uh, building this out is that you need to uh, jumper the SRX here on the bottom of the board um, because you have a choice between PPM output and serial RX and you want to jumper those two so you have serial RX and then the uh, second thing you want to be aware of is you want to jumper the um, or you want to bridge the 5 volt output instead of the 3 volt so where this is relevant is on the other side of the board where I've soldered on my cables for the XSR receiver and it has to do with these three pins here the receive, the 5 volt, and the ground. If you solder the 3 volt then it will output 3.3 volts here on the 5 volts and this is for those guys that want to do spectrum but I did 5 volts because uh, obviously the XSR will take 5 volts and then the other thing is that um, if you plug in the USB port it will output 5 volts here but not on the other 5 volt rails for the UART. So I was hoping to um, have my cables a little bit shorter and have it out of the back here 
on, on these UARTs, but because it doesn't output 5 volts, I have to get it from over here. I end up um, having the wires come out the front, see the front here, instead of the back, and then have, I'm going to have the cables uh, wrapped around this way, like this, and it's going to go to the back of the quad this way. Now the other thing that you should be aware of is that these these three here are on UART 1, but by default uh, UART 1 has MSP enabled and you can't have Serial RX and MSP enabled at the same time, they conflict with each other. You need to disable MSP on UART 1 and enable Serial RX on UART 1 to get this to work. And then for the um, FreeSky telemetry, which is actually a smart port telemetry, um, it's a it's uh, right here, the yellow wire here coming out of the XSR. I'm having it go to the transmit on UART 3. And when in the uh, configuration, you're going to select smart port, not free sky. Free sky is for the, uh, the older D4R2. So for the uh, SBUS receivers that have smart port, you're going to select smart port in the configuration for that. Now I've started on my uh, battery connection here. It's going to be using a 1.25 millimeter pitch JST connector here. And on the quad, on the PDB, I just have uh, the corresponding connector here soldered onto the PDB directly, and then I also have an, uh, another connector here, which is a two pin connector. And it's going to go to my uh, video transmitter here. So these are, um, so I just happen to have one of these from an old computer that I just pulled. This is hard drive LED and uh, just took these uh, servo connectors here, which is actually from one of these, an ESC that I just uh, pulled off from another build, and I'm gonna use that to power up my uh, video transmitter like this. Just plug it in, just just fits right in. It's the same pitch and everything, just that it doesn't have, it's not keyed, so you gotta make sure you have the polarity right, because if you, you can flip it over and still plug it in. If, if you do that, you'll fry your video transmitter, so be aware of that. And then I'll just uh, be plugging in the camera into this port. So it makes everything very modular. I can swap out components and disconnect things if I need to. So things like this, is, uh, this is sort of the way I've been trying to build things lately. Okay guys, I got the flight controller mounted and I've cut my servo leads from the ESC here and directly soldered them to the four corners, ground and signal. And I gotta say, um, now that I've got all the wires out of the way and have everything soldered, uh, this combination of this PDB with the, for the Martian and the Lux flight controller really cleans up these ESC wires, the power and the signal wires. So they're all here in the corner. It's all very uh, tucked away, clean, uh, a lot of wires out of the way. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with how clean this uh, build ended up being, at least so far. Um, so you can see that they're everything's direct soldered and I really do like these longer pads here for direct soldering. It's, it makes it a lot easier than using those through holes. Those can be a bit tricky. Um, but yeah, I like the fact that it's all very neatly organized in the corners here for all these. It's uh, really clean overall. Got my XSR receiver here in the back and I just have it uh, zip tied to the, to the bottom frame here with a little bit of, uh, I can't see that. Let's see here. Yeah, there it is. You got a little bit of a uh, double-sided foam tape there. So that's uh, going to have the antennas poking up through the back. I'll have uh, put the top on and have my video transmitter and camera here. So I'll be doing that stuff next. But so far looking very, very nice. Very nice. I like it. Okay, guys, I'm just about done with the build. I'll show you what I did here with the top plate. So here on the bottom side of the top plate, I've installed the entire FPV system. So I've got my uh, video transmitter and my FPV camera, the Runcam Swift. So I'm using these connectors. It's just the uh, three pin servo connector that goes into the uh, video in for the video transmitter right here. And I just zip tie these wires together. And I just have to give it power here. And that's going to be provided by this lead right here, which I have directly soldered to my PDB. So it's going to be giving uh, uh, direct battery voltage to the video transmitter. 
Uh, so, so if you're going to be building something like this with some different components, make sure your video transmitter and your FPV camera can take uh, a wide voltage range. So I think these are like at least, I think the Swift is 5 to 17 volts and this is uh, 5 to 24 volts. So uh, I'm only going to be flying 3 and 4, so this is totally, totally going to work just fine. Uh, I've got my video transmitter zip-tied here to the bottom of the top plate and the antenna zip-tied in the back over here. So it looks like from the side, put a little bit of, um, let's see if we can get them into view. There you go. Put a little bit of electrical tape there on the edge of the uh, top plate here so that it doesn't rub against the antenna and, and cut into it. So that should be... It shouldn't move too much. The, the antenna is somewhat bendable anyway. So get a little angle there. And it keeps it short so it doesn't uh, get caught in things and uh, cause you to crash. So I got that zip tied there. So it's pretty secure. And I'm putting, I also put a little bit of uh, foam tape there as well. So this is the way it looks. Um, put it here so you can have uh, a view of the frequency and channel numbers here and also the button to change my channels is easily accessible and uh, there are my connections for my video and power there so this whole th thing is very it's completely self-contained modular except for the power and doing maintenance would be really simple on this build just have to unscrew the eight screws on the bottom and the whole top just comes right off, and I just have to unplug uh, the power right there. But uh, yeah, this, this is a pretty nice build, and it's going to be pretty easy to maintain in case of anything that I need to do. Let's see, uh, look at the camera. And uh, I elected not to use the uh, little camera plate because that's designed for the HS1177 uh, and not the Swift, so it didn't fit. But I can still... Um, adjust my camera angle. There's a little bit of a tension there so it should be uh, adjustable by hand like that. Okay so before I uh, close up this build and finish it up I'm gonna go ahead and do my uh, software programming. I have to flash the ESCs and check my motor directions and all that so I'm gonna do that next. Okay guys I'm just doing the uh, ESC calibration with these motors and they're very very smooth on these BL Heli S ESCs so I've got a P PWM signal of 1025 and they're, they're spinning at a very, very low RPM rate. I'll drop it down a little bit more. That's how smooth they are. Not even twitching. This one over here is starting to twitch right there. At, we're at 1018 now. Right here, let me uh, throw all this up here slowly. Very smooth. Okay, here it is all completed with the top section uh, bolted on to the bottom plate. As uh, as I mentioned, it was pretty easy to do. Just stick it on. You got eight screws in the bottom, and then you just got to plug in the uh, JST connector for the um, FPV camera and video transmitter. So here's a closer look at it from the top. Just ran my uh, antennas from the XSR up through these holes and this antenna plate and I put a little bit of heat shrink around the antenna wires to give it a little bit of stiffness and to protect it from the uh, carbon so it doesn't get cut up but it just um, because the antennas from the XSR are already fairly short there, there's no danger of it getting down in the props at all so it'll sit there pretty nice 
Yeah, PB antenna is just going to sit out of the back here like that. Just, that'll be just fine. I did add these uh, foam feet to the bottom of the arms. Uh, not really necessary, but picked those up. I think I got them from Banggood. They were really dirt cheap. So just picked up a few of those and uh, we'll make for a nice soft landing. Let's see how much this guy weighs. So this is uh, everything without the battery and, and no propellers. I'm going to be using um, these uh, uh, dial prop. 5040B2, so 326, so I'll throw the props on there. 346. These props are, wow, well, props are 20 grams. Didn't expect that. Okay, so 346 with the propellers. And uh, for comparison, let's bring in the, the last build that I just did. This is the, uh, the uh, it's called the X220. There's nothing, uh, there's no name for it. And this one comes in at uh, 383, so it's about 40, this is about 40 grams heavier than the Martian. So, and it is this, just uh, as I mentioned in the review for this video, for the for this frame, this, this, this frame feels like a tank. So, it would probably take a lot of abuse, even though, you know, those got four millimeter arms and, and this has four millimeter arms. This, the Martian feels, uh, lighter so it's about let's see, 346 three, well, about 40 grams lighter so I'm pretty sure it'll be noticeable in the air with the uh, same propeller so we'll see okay so that's the end of the uh, build video here I'm gonna have some flight video up pretty soon I'm not sure when I'm gonna made this hopefully in a few days and I'll get some video up uh, as soon as I can so let me know if you like this video and the way I did it a little bit different this, this way so I'm um, not sure if it's uh, better or worse let me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you like, give me a, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.